we've already discussed the vertebrates, those animals that has a backbone, or particularly on vertebrates. So now let's go or discuss and focus on the another main group of an animals, which is called as invertebrates. So if vertebrates has uh, those animals this, that has a backbone, uh, invertebrates is very uh, different to vertebrates. Why? Invertebrates is those animals that is uh, that without a backbone. So let's go now. Let's know the diversity among the animals. Okay. So invertebrates and vertebrates. We've already discussed the vertebrates animals. So invertebrates. So invertebrates is an any of the multicellular animals that lack a vertebral column. Okay. What do you mean by vertebral column? When we say vertebral column, it is a column or also known as the spinal column. Meaning to say, the central axis of the skeleton in all vertebrates. When we say spinal column, it is your backbone. So, that is the difference between invertebrate and vertebrate. Kasi invertebrate is lacking of backbone. Meaning to say, there is no spinal column. But vertebrate has a spi spinal column and it is called as vertebrate vertebral column or it has a backbone always remember that one next we have let's uh, explain it further invertebrates are animals that neither possesses or nor develop vert uh, vertebral column yun nga sinasabi ko commonly uh, known as a backbone or spine or even your spinal column this includes all animals apart from the chordate chordate or the subphylum vertebrata so i've already we've already encountered it, this name on our first uh, uh first ppt and our first um what they call this activity like you classify your favorite animals into different um kingdom or or or, or classification diba nagpasa kayo sa akin activity so coordinate subphylum you can eventually know that one in our first um discussion Okay, so it is familiar example of invertebrates included arthropods. So what are those ar arthropods? Of course, insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and uh, myriapods, yan, mollusks, and so on and so forth. So I will be not reading it because it's already in the PowerPoint. You can read it naman. So that is the familiar example of invertebrates. As you can observe and uh, as you can see, these are the animals that has no backbone. So let's let's explain it further. Tingnan. So this is the internal part of a organism that has no backbone. So as you can see, the part, it has tentacles, mouth, um, head, but Mapapansin nyo, there is no spinal column or there is no um, ver vertebral column or there is no backbone. So, we will be identifying those animals. This is the representation or the illustration of the classif classification of invertebrates or the animals without backbone. First classification or first level, we have arthropoda. Second, we have uh, Echinodermata and Mollusca, then Nidaria, Ana, Analida, Porifera, Plathihelmets, Mints, and Nematodes. So, these are the classification or the name of the animals that has no backbone or particularly it is a invertebrate. Okay? Yan, yan yung mga pictures ng yan, di ba? It is particularly in insects. Kasi ang insects naman, there is no backbone, eh, as you can see in their, in their, ano, internal parts. So, let's explain it further pa. Okay, characteristics of arthropods, or the first one. Arthropods are small invertebrates animals with jointed legs. They have an external shell-like skeleton made of a tough, rigid materials their body parts and segments are joined by flexible membranes which allow the various parts to move meaning to say uh, arthropod is particularly in phylum arthropoda meaning to say it is a it is the largest phylum in the animal kingdom which includes such familiar forms as lobster crabs mites 
insects, centipedes, and millipedes. So that is arthropod. Again, arthropod is a member of the phylum Anthropoda, meaning to say it is the largest phylum in the animal kingdom that includes familiar forms like lobsters, crab, spiders, mites, insects, centipedes, and millipedes. So that is arthropods. Next, the majority of arthropods are not harmful to human. Most of species are medically important as they can cause diseases in in humans, and these arthropods can be put in four main category. First one, harmful. Cause a nuisance, discomfort, and blood loss by their bite. So what are those animals that can give or that can 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 give harmful in the humans? Of course, we have mosquitoes, bugs, and fleas. Mosquitoes, bugs, and fleas can uh, give you a harmful in your body. Okay, let's proceed to another slide. We have also ectoparasite. Ectoparasite will live and feed permanently on the exterior of the host without transmitting germs. So what are those uh, particular animals that is um, go that is belong to ectoparasites? We have head lice, lice, head lice, pubic lice, and Cabbies mites. So these are the the example of the animals that is belong to ectoparasites. Next, we have mechanical transporters. When we say mechanical transporters, it can transmit disease passively by picking up infectious from feces, and then contaminating human foods so that diseases is contracted orally. So what are those? Of course, flies, diba lango. And not only lango, cockroaches. Cockroaches can bring harmful in your body or can bring also harm in the food itself. One the once that food that is being um nadapuan ng lango or ng cockroaches can cause and harmful inside your body. So yeah, so that is mechanical transporter or meaning to say the harm full of that animals can be transmitted in mechanical transporter or they can they can transport their uh, their uh, harmful to food to your food kung ano yung madapuan nila so what are those we have flies and cockroaches next anthropod as a vector so there are biological evidences of anthropod as a vector so meaning to say, when we say it is a vector, uh, there are the evidences. We have closely li related with humans, biting or sucking, humans lapping or contaminating foods, common species at local area, dense population, or the lifespan is long enough to complete the development or proliferation. So that is the evidences or biological evidences of anthropod as a vector. Aside from biological evidences, we also have the epide uh, epidemiological evidences. So meaning to say, um, these animals can be ge geographic and sensational dis uh, distribution. Uh, yon. So that is the epidemiological the biological evidence of an anthropod being a vector. So number one, or the one and last um, uh, uh, explanation bit of that is that is uh, it can be geographic and sensual distribution. So that is the the discussion or the explanation about anthropod as a vector. So next we have phylum Anthropoda includes three classes of medical importance. We have class crust. Uh, crustacea, class cor uh, crustacea, or cyclops and crabs. It is belongs to cyclops and crabs. Class Ar 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 arachnida, or scorpions, spiders, ticks, and mites. We have class insecta. We have mosquitoes, flies, and bugs, and fleas. So these are the three classes of the phylum Anthropoda. Okay. Let's proceed. So let's discuss what is this class Crustacea. So most Crustacea, uh, Crustaceans have two pairs of uh, ante antenna. So when we say antenna, 
It is a one pair of slender movable segmented sensory organs on the head of an insect or on the head of the crustacea. So that is antenna. The majority of crustaceans are aquatic, living in either marine or freshwater environments, but a few groups have adopted to life on land. So kaya nga it is crust, uh, crustacea or crustaceans are those crabs and cyclops because they are li they are living in the fresh water or even in the ocean. So the medical importance of the class crust crustacea is that cyclops are intermediate host of the fish tapeworm. So that is eventually the medical importance of it. So let's move forward with the another class of uh, phylum anthropoda. We also have class arachnida. Class arachnida includes three orders of medical importance. We have order of scorpions, order aranea or the spiders, and order akari or the ticks and the mites. Okay, let's proceed. So the characteristics of order aranea or particularly in the spiders is that spiders can hunt their prey or catch it in webs they have either six or eight eyes even though they can't see far away the hair on their bodies used as a sensor to feel their way around and to tell when other animals are near so meaning to say spider cannot it so meaning to say the explanation if why uh, or why p spiders cannot see in a far away anong ginagamit nila to hunt is that their hair so their hair can sensor if there is panganib may panganib na paparating sa, sa kanila or if their prey o yung pagkain nila ay nasa malapit so that is the process on how the spider can hunt even nasa malayo hindi siya nakakakita Okay, let's proceed to the medical importance of the spider. Black widow spider, most dangerous species. They are found in every terrestrial freshwater and shallow marine habitat, known and feed on fungi plants and animals. The venom is neurotoxic, affecting the human nervous system and cramps in the legs. Arm and chest occur with a local swelling. Symptoms of it, it may include headache, nausea, tremors, and slight rise in the body temperature. So that is the medical importance of the spider. So always remember the dangerous species of a spider is called black widow spider. Okay, let's proceed. Order Akari. So order Akari is the group that sucks blood and serve as the vector. So ano sila? So meaning to say this are the ticks or the mites. Hard ticks, soft ticks, or each mite does mite. Let's explain. Uh, so that is order Akari. So this is the particularly animals that can suck blood. Yung, uh, yung nag nighihigop ng blood, either human or other animals. That is order Akari. Order Akari is actually the parasite in the uh, mammal. Diba? Yung mga kuto. Kuto sa Tagalog, ang ticks. Pwede rin sa aso, nakikita rin natin. At lumalaki at lumalaki pa to. Ha? Always remember that. So, let's proceed to, to identify the, uh, identifying the kingdom an animalia, particularly on the phylum mollusca or mollusk. Invertebrates pa rin to, ha? So, the structure of it, soft-bodied animals, named from the Latin word mollus, meaning to say soft. So, meaning to say the external body part of this kind of animals is soft. Most are protected by hard shell made of calcium carbonate. Have a reduced internal cell or have lost the shell completely during evolution. Possession of column or column, the definition or the meaning, sorry, excuse me. The meaning of that is a fluid filled cavity that develops within the mesoderm. So let's explain it further. So the continuation for the structure, there are three distinct body zones. We have foot, visceral, and man, visceral mass, and mantle. So what are the, the function of this one? For foot, contains uh, sensory and motor organs. For visceral mass, it is contains internal organs used for decision, digestion, sorry, digestion, excretion, and reproduction. That is why it's called visceral mass. Mantle, a fold of tissues that drapes over the visceral mass and secretes a shell if there is one present. So meaning to say, mantle has its cavity and it is called as mantle cavity, which is water-filled chamber that houses the gills, anus, and excretory 
pores. So, uh, hindi pa dyan. In the structure also, in the mo of molos, we also have radula. Radula is the strap-like rasping organ used to scrape up food with the curved teeth. It is allow, it, it allows the molos to scrape algae and other food of or off rocks and drill through the shell of prey or catch fish. So this is particular, this very co constant function or function that literally can be found in the structure of the mollus. Okay, continue. So this is the inter external parts of visceral mass or the mollus. So meaning to say, meaning to uh, to say, mollus are those animals that is smooth. In the in, in in the outside part or the external part, but um, there is so called shell in the upper one. Yung sa taas nila may shell. Um, snails. Snails is one of a example of a mollusk. Kasi bakit? Ang labas ng snail malambot, soft, at saka moisty. But yung may dala-dala si snail na parang parehas kay turtle na bahay. Parang bahay niya, which is called as its shell. So, that is mollus. So, we have parts here. Ne uh, column, uh, nepredium, mantle, mantle cavity, anus, gills for them to breathe, foot, nerve cords, esophagus, mouth, radula, shell, stomach, intestine, gonad, heart. So that is that uh, you can be you can found here. Sorry, you can found here the radula and the mouth, or where can the snail can uh, eat or can swallow their food from the radula and the mouth. Okay, let's proceed to the types of there are three types or three most common types of mollusks. We have gas uh, gastropods, uh, bivalves, and the se cephalopods okay gastropods bivalves and cephalopods okay let's proceed on uh, knowing this one gastropoda or gastropods are make up 80 percent of mollusks which consists of about 37,500 living species most gastropods is um have an external shell yun ang sinasabi natin uh, Meron, ta meron silang external shell but uh, the the body of it is soft they can either be heb uh, herbivores or scavengers and carnivores they usually live in oceans on rocks and land and in fresh water and they use their muscular foot to creep along a carpet of mucus that they ooze out in order to crawl so particularly gast gastropoda are those um, animals that has an external shell Yung merong daladalang shell ang sinasabi ko. Snails is in the gastropoda. Oh. There are uh, uh, pasok si snail sa gastropoda because the, the classification of gastropoda is very fit to the animal called snail. Meron siyang external shell. Okay, let's proceed. The most common gastropods, kaya nga sinasabi ko, are snails, lanin aquatic, slugs, uh, naughty branch, uh, and uh, theropods because somata and sea butterflies so these are the examples of the gastropods those animals that has an external shell except the turtles okay let's proceed to bivalvia or bivalves this is also known as the pele uh, pelecopoda or lom el elebrancha so bivalves always have two shells if um, if gastropoda is particularly on the external shell, um, ito namang bivalva is, has a two shells held together by hinges and strong muscles. Some are omnivores or animals or person that eats food of both plant and animal origin and also eat bacteria and proteins. They filter feed in which food sticks to the mucus on their gills. Then cilia move to their mouth. They may live in any watery environment because they are able to swim and float around. And lastly, there are only type of mollusks that does not have a radula. So by vulva, via is this one is the example of this is a two shell or shells in the ocean. So let me let me show it to you. By valves lack defined heads. Eyes may be present somewhere else on the body. They have an open circulatory system. 
They also have sensory cells. There are approximately uh, 7,500 living species of bivalves. The name of bivalves derives from their two valves, their two shells in which it is divided. So uh, that is uh, the reason why it is called as bivalves because of the two shells na na uh, na na nina, two shells ng isang animal. So meaning to say, um, yung kaya siya naging bi because there are two valves or there are two shells. Most common bivalves includes ito na mussels, clams. Oysters, scallops. So those are uh, these are the shells that eventually has a two. Makita mo sa structure nila may dalawang shells. Tapos bago mo makikita yung katawan ng animals nito. So what are those? Mussels, clams, oysters, and scallops. Okay, let's proceed to cephalopoda. Cephalopoda or cephalopo uh, cephalopods either have internal or external shells or no, or no shells at all. They are carnivores. They capture prey with their muscular tentacles, crush it with their beak, and scrape the flesh of with the radio there are about 600 living species of cephalopods so what are those cephalopods they all live in the ocean of course they are able to move through jet propulsions squeezing a current of water out of their mantle cavity and through a tube their closed circulatory system make them the fastest smartest and biggest of all mollusks and what are those cephalopoda or those animals that belongs to cephalopods or octopus, squid, cuttlefish, and nautilus. So as you can see, there are, there ha there are ha these animals are having tentacles. So yon. That's why it's very dan dangerous then because those animals that having tentacles is very dangerous. Meron pwedeng makuryante ka. Meron pwedeng ma... ma uh, the venom of its uh, of its animals can ca can can harm the body of the human like that. So that is cello cephalopoda or cephalopods. Okay. So the importance. Let's know now the importance of mollusks. Mollusks serve as a food or a uh, food serve as a food for humans as well as for other animals oh pwede Mer meron talaga like for example the the scallops like that the 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 oct puti uh, uh, octopus yan pusit yan there these are those mollusks that can that can be food by the human so they are used for pearls and native american currencies like for example in the shells pwede rin tayo makakuha tayo ng mga pearls in that some are used in as the environmental indicators because their bodies are filled with water yes there are about 85,000 species of mollusks it is the largest marine phylum yes of course Th there is a risk of food poisoning from toxins uh, that accumulate in mollusks their bites and stings are fatal and some are venomous you know sinasabi ko that uh, not all the mollusks is not uh, is ano uh, Yang hindi harmful. Some of them is actually venomous. Okay? So let's proceed. Let's proceed now to another phylum of which is particularly belong to invertebrates. So we have phylum Annelida. So this is our those uh, phylum that is like a ano. Mashadong slimy and lumalaki afterwards. Defend, depending on how they can feed themselves. Oh, so let's go now to the world of Annelida. Introduction to Phylum Annelida. So let me quick read this one. The Phylum Annelida exhibit great diversity of body form. There are segmented worms and are thus distinguished from other worms like flatworms, roundworms, and so on. They included the familiar earthworms and leeches in addition to the number of marine and freshwater species. They vary in size ranging between um, less than 1 mm and, and the largest. And the giant is 3 mm. Greater than 1 mm. Yan, yon. So I corrected my uh, word. Long earthworm of Australia. So meaning to say the phylum anilede is particularly on the worm. Uh, different types of worm. Yun nga. But uh, aside from worm, they, they included also the leeches. Linta. Okay, so etymology. So the Latin word for Annelida is Anelus or Anelus 
or it is uh, meant to say uh, demin uh, diminutive of annulus or a ring. Okay, let's proceed. There are classes, of course, in different classes in the fine loam annelida. We have polychytate class, Iolosomata class. It's it is it's actually hard to pronounce it, right? Clitalata class or super class, Oli uh, oligo chita subclass, branch cube. Della sub, uh, subclass and the Hyrandinea subclass. So let's know it one by one. So basic characteristics of before knowing those types of uh, classes in Pylum, let's know the basic characteristics of it. Annelid means little rings, distinguished by segmentation and body cavity. Range in length from 1 uh, mm to 3 m. Then bilaterally symmetrical. So this is the characteristics of an anilid or anilus. Okay. So aside from that, it, is the, it has a digestive tract. Ability to survive in most environment. Possess a separate section or prosomium or mouth, trunk, and pygidium or tail. Cephaludes. It is also have a cephaludes. Yon. So that is the basic characteristics of annelids or annelus. So as you can see in the picture, eventually all of the picture has the same characteristic of a one species. What is this one? Worm. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, so let's proceed now to the uh, discuss the phylum Nidaria. So phylum Nidaria has its own general characteristics. So what are this one? Stinging creature. It is called as a stinging creature. Why? Because of its again tentacles. Tentacles. Ano ba ito? Of course, jellyfish. One of the phylum Nidaria is a jellyfish. Ra radial symmetry. Two different body plans exist. We have medusa and polyp. Uh, Nidorians are made up of two tissues layers separately by mesoglea. And the habitat of the phylum Nidoria is in the aquatic or water. So that is phylum Nidoria. So this is actually the examples of the animals that particularly on the Nidoria. We have the box jelly, moon jelly, animoon, and physalea. So ito lang yun, the division of Nidoria, Kumbuzoa, Sipfozoa, Anthozoa, and Hydrozoa. Okay, so let's proceed on discussing nematodes. Hi, sir. Okay, nematodes. Introduction for nematodes. So let's know first what is this nematode. Nematode is a thread like or elongated bilaterally symmetrical, non segmented cylindrical worms, a tape a pring at both ends, possesses cuticle. Sexes are separately. The issues, male is smaller than female, and its posterior end is curved ventrally. Females are either viviparous or produces larvae on, or embryos, oviparous or lay eggs, or ovoviviparous or lay eggs which hatch immediately. And also nematoids has its own, uh, or it can be live in, in intestinal tract or tissue so that is the introduction part of nematodes okay so this is the classification of nematodes uh, summarization to their habitat of adult worms so intestinal nematode we have this one small intestine lymphatic so i can uh, i will be not uh, i will be not be digging with this one so just uh, familiarize the box itself just know because it is constant constant classification ato so hindi nagbabago so just uh, familiarize it memorize it so yan so this is the classification or the summarization of its classification so let's proceed on knowing them so ascaris lombricoids or it is called as the round worm hmm. eggs okay we have 60 60 micrometers, bile stain, albuminous coat with unsegmented ovium, infected form, embryonated eggs, mode of transmission, ingestion, site of location, small intestine. So this is a round worm. So meaning to say round worm can be fine or the location of round worm, 
roundworm is in the small intestine. Okay. Next would be the play. Uh, okay, plaything helmets or also known as the flatworms, tapeworms, and flukes. So, let's know the characteristics of it. There are about 20,000 species and more than 85% are parasitic. Flatworm live in marine fresh water and moist terrestrial environment. Excuse me. There are uh, triploblastic, which means they have three germs layer. So, what are those three germs layer? We have ectoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. Derm. So that is the classification or the characteristics of the um, platyhelminths. Okay, continuation of that. There are the most primitive animals to have bilateral symmetry and minimal cephalization. They have no column or the body cavity and it can be considered to be an aculo aculum mate. Okay, so. Aside from that, the digestion of the platyhelminths is particularly or filled with a virus cellular packing material called parenchyma. Or parenchyma. Okay. Because they show more specialization and division of labor, they have reached the organ system level of development. Okay. So that is the characteristics of platy helmets. So of course, in any other ta classification of animals, there are also diverse classes, or there are also classes of it. So this one, there are four classes of flatworms. We have class Turbalaria, means commotion-like. So this is the this is the example as you can see with the illustration. Sorry with that. Um, it is like a flat. Kasi yun nga, it is part of the flatworm. Ito sila yung mga commotion like or the how they how they how the flatworm can be transmit. Uh, how can the uh, the flatworm can uh, can transport kung paano? So that is class Tobelaria. Flat lang sila. So they can they can actually like swim or like uh, having transportation like nasa parang iba ibabaw hindi nakadikit yung kanilang yung kanilang uh, body into the land o, or sa land ng ocean ganon. So that is class Torbalaria. We have class Thermatoda means perforated form. So this is the example. Next, we have class Monogena means single kind. Okay. Then class Sastoda means girdle form. So that is that is the so from the picture itself. No, it's it's very like iwi. So uh, I hope that you are open minded to look for this kind or to see for this kind of illustration that is very not la uh, not suitable to our eyes because the the structure itself is like. I don't know how to express that that description. Okay, so let's proceed. So much for that. So that is the types of the flatworm. Okay, let's go now to the phylum Echinodermata or Echinodermata. Echinoderms. So what are those Echinoderms or the visual? There, these are the visual of the Echinoderms. We have in the oceans, aquatic like linto. Brittle stars, uh, crinoid, uh, sand dollar, sea cucumber, sea cucumber again, sea urchin, sea urchin, yeah, sea urchin, like toyom in Tagalog, starfish, and also a starfish. So that is the universe in the aquatic area. So this is actually the last one, the, the visual of universe or the phylum echi no. Dermata. So this is the example. So this is the last lesson that eventually will be this uh, that that will that I discuss in or we will discuss. We discuss pala kasi it's already done. Sorry. This is the last lesson for midterm. So I hope you understand the lesson itself. So please, 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 please read, read and uh review. And view the discussion that I will be uploading in our e-class. Don't miss it because in the examination, magtataka na naman kayo. Mom, where is this one? All of that is I, uh, is I already discussed it. So, walang question. So, all you have to do is view, listen to the discussion. So, this discussion, I will be uploading it, all of it in our YouTube channel. So, you are free to... To, to you are free to download my video or you are not 
or even uh, even those uh, even though even those even though na hindi mo siya ma-upload uh, download it's okay as long as you will view it panuorin pakinggan pa ulit-ulit if you cannot understand those topic so if you have inquiries and uh, question you can leave that in our gc thank you very much that is the end of our lesson so have a safe day every day and please uh, do not forget to what to like for example since it is pandemic yung proper hand sanitation yan so always remember that one so see you in our face-to-face -face laboratory that will be conducted next i don't know if it is next week so i will be giving you an uh, instruction in our gc just wait for that so goodbye and thank you